Opioids are small molecules that interact with nerve cells in your body to help regulate pain. There are many different sources of opioids, including prescriptions, illicit drugs, and your own body. The opioids produced in your body are called endogenous opioids. Endogenous opioids affect many parts of your body, including the lungs, the heart, the intestines, and the brain. Today, we're going to focus on how opioids affect the brain. Inside your brain, there are proteins called opioid receptors. When you get hurt, these receptors tell your brain that you are in pain. When this happens, your brain releases endogenous opioids. When opioids bind to the opioid receptor, they stop the receptors from sending pain signals and instead cause them to send relaxation signals. This stops the pain from becoming overwhelming and allows you to keep functioning even when you're in pain. Since opioids regulate pain, people have made drugs out of them. This includes both prescription medications like Oxycontin and Percocet and illicit drugs like heroin. Prescription opioids and illicit opioids interact with opioid receptors in your brain in exactly the same way. When you take an opioid drug, it enters your brain even if there are no pain signals coming from your opioid receptors. The drug binds to opioid receptors and causes the receptors to send relaxation signals. The relaxation signals cause your breath rate to slow. If you take too many opioids, the relaxation signals can cause your breathing to stop altogether. This is called an overdose. If you or someone you know overdoses on opioids, you should call 911 immediately. Overdoses are deadly if you do not get immediate medical attention. In Michigan, if you seek treatment for an opioid overdose, for yourself or for a friend, neither you nor your friend can be prosecuted for drug possession. Even if you do not overdose, opioids are dangerous because they are addicting. When you take an opioid drug, your brain is flooded with good feelings because there are no pain signals to counteract the relaxing effects. Your brain is designed to recognize when you feel good and tell your body to repeat the actions that brought about that feeling. So, when you stop taking opioids, your brain begins to crave them. These cravings can lead to addiction or a behavior of compulsive drug use despite harmful consequences. Addiction is characterized by the inability to stop using a drug. After long periods of opioid use, your brain physically changes so that it can function normally when opioids are present. One way that your brain changes is by making extra opioid receptors. Now, when you take a dose of opioids, they are no longer able to fill all of the receptors. The unfilled receptors can still cause cravings. Thus, it takes a larger dose of opioids to stop the cravings and have the same relaxing effects. This is called tolerance. We don't know all of the changes your body makes when you develop a tolerance to opioids, but we do know that after you develop a tolerance, your body can no longer function normally without opioids. This is called dependence. If you are dependent on opioids and you stop taking them, the changes that your body made to become tolerant will make you sick. This sickness is called withdrawal. There are many symptoms of withdrawal. They include nausea and vomiting, anxiety, trouble sleeping, hot and cold flashes, sweating, muscle cramps, runny noses, and diarrhea. Fortunately, after a few weeks, your body will revert the changes that it made to become tolerant, and the physical symptoms of withdrawal will stop. Unfortunately, the cravings and psychological symptoms of withdrawal can last years. That is why medication-assisted treatment, counseling, and social support are all integral parts of opioid use disorder treatment.